big problems we're, we're facing in our digital technology today is that so much is screen-based that we have no tactile feedback. Uh, I've complained on my show, I've got a Tesla and I can't change the air vents without using a screen, which means I have to look away from the, from the view of the car the way I want to be driving and I don't think that's very safe. And it looks like Tanvis may have a solution for that. So I'm talking to Greg, to uh, sorry, Greg Topol of Tanvis. Tell us about this. Yeah, so exactly right. So what we're doing is we want to make an experience that is more tangible than just a vision-based input device. So we've created a touchscreen that allows you to feel what you see. So as you just said, one of the major applications that we've worked with and actually just announced a partnership with Intellux today is solving the problem of the distracted driver. The idea of... Who's the partnership with again? Uh, Intellux. Okay. So Intellux makes displays for, they're both a tier one and tier two for automotive manufacturers. So we are working on a couple of uh, automotive programs and they are tier one. So wait a minute, it's a touch screen, but I can, f I'm going to be able to feel this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually there, visually, this is a good example here. So what we can do here is this uh, circle right there is where it activates the, the knob. And and this is audio as well as video, so I'm going to describe a little bit. We see a little knob on screen. Yep, we see a knob on the screen, and there's a little button. There's a little circle uh, that, that that is where the active place is. I can feel where that active place is through a little bit of texture. Can I feel that? Go for it. Oh yeah, so it's, the screen is sort of jiggling when I got near the knob, ah. near the near that button. That's right. So, well, I, I should just to clarify, there is no moving parts. So what that? Oh come on! You, ah, I know. It, and there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually no moving parts. What we're actually doing is we're calling electroadhesion. We actually create an electric field underneath your finger and it attracts your skin to the screen. It's nothing more. Really? Than, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a, then, so it's it's an electrical impulse that's coming to my finger. Uh, it's a capacitance. So we're actually capacitance. Okay. Yeah. So we're attracting your skin. We're not putting any energy into you. We're just attracting you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Isn't that really is a good idea. So the idea though is that I want to take a vision-based knob and make it so that I can actually tactily interact with it rather than have to do it visually. You just said it. 20, 15, 20 years ago, we used to be able to navigate our screen through the sense of touch. Right. I could glance down and find kind of roughly where I wanted to be, but the finer tuning of finding that control, turning finding the volume that radio two. station. Exactly. <laughs> turning it once. All that used to be able to done while keeping my eyes on the road. Actually, yeah, a lot of those actually even had like little bumps, they had little detents, so you'd know when you when you turn it up. That's right. Steve, that's you right. gotta try this. <laughs> Steve's doing the recording, but I'm that's gonna have right. him reach in and do it too. That's right. It's, uh, when you're on it, you absolutely can feel where that is. That's, right. That's really interesting that, that it's capacitance. Yes. Um, so this is not a standard screen. It's, this is the technology That's that you're right. selling. So right? this is both a multi-touch sensor and a haptic touch screen. So this is, our, this is our solution. And what's beautiful about it is that because there's no moving parts, we are completely independent of size or shape. So when screens start to get curved, it makes no difference to us. Oh. Okay, okay. I'd like to say that that's kind of a harmony of our technology. So regardless if it's a small little screen or a large display, any kind of haptic response will feel exactly the same in any case. Interesting, interesting. So can you do more than just a little knob button there? Oh, we can do anything you want. So uh, this is probably a little different than uh, maybe what you're expecting here. Gillette so. baby face, it Gillette says. Baby face. How does a beard feel? So I can feel his beard? <laughs> Wait, a minute, I'm feeling stuff all. Oh, wherever I go over his beard, I can feel yeah, it. So it's, it's, Steve and I are touching it, guys. We're both touching it and feeling it, though. Well, actually, so this is our older is generation it? technology where only one can feel at a time. Our Gen 3, our new one, is multi touch. Multi, oh, okay. multi touch. So he was stealing some touch he for me. He was stealing some touch. So you know. can I shave this face now? Oh, well, you got to add some shaving cream okay. first. Oh, so I don't <laughs> shave my face. Okay. And now I'm going to shave, and I'm going to actually feel what it feels like to shave. So where you're shaving now is smooth, and where you haven't shaven yet is still rough. Oh, wow. Okay, so, that's crazy. I'm so, shaving some poor guy's nose right yes now. Yes, you are. So actually I'm, actually, I'm happy to say that we actually won a Silver Lion Award from the Colin Leo's Awards a couple years ago on this application. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so... <laughs> nope. I want to do dinosaur reveal. Go for the dinosaur reveal. We love feel, this experience. Feel the sand. This is a great example of an of a, of a application maybe for museums. So obviously everything in a museum is supposed to be interactive, supposed to be engaging. What more way of engaging? Rather than just being a visual, now you tactily can feel that sand being removed. And now you can feel those, those dinosaur bones. Oh wow, so Steve has just used a paintbrush to, to uh, a little brush to get the uh, sand off the dinosaur. That's right. I want to touch the dinosaur. <laughs> Steve is touching the dinosaur. 
So it's nice and smooth. So this might be interesting for accessibility as well. You're absolutely right. So accessibility is obviously a major problem for, for uh, touchscreens. Obviously the idea is that you have a vision-based input device for someone who has no vision. So we can actually make it so that there's textures for text or, or visuals. Obviously voice recognition is a big part of how people with vision impairment interact with it. But the problem is they still don't know what's on the screen. We can make Can it you do Braille? You cannot do Braille, but we can change what Braille is. So Braille actually hooks into your finger. We're just doing friction. So there are two different ways of doing it. But sure. we can change Braille. Uh, yeah. that's, 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 a, that's a long road. Big goal, long, long game, long well, game. I didn't lead with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I did walk you into it. Okay, we got music control. Oh, that was you the one we had. Saw that one. What was the, oh, the texture catalog was really fun. So yeah. there's a screen that says choppy, and it's basically got some, some vertical lines, and I can feel those with my finger. Got it. And then grainy is more like the sand we're on, and then fine is a bunch of little tiny lines. It's almost like the And then wavy, tone. oh, and wavy is actually, that actually feels like it's got depth going in and out. Yeah, yes. Try this one, Steve, this, this wavy one. Oh, yeah. you played with wavy already. So the interesting thing about that wavy is a good example of what happens when you can do a little friction change. We actually are changing your acceleration, deceleration all across the screen by a little friction, but it feels like you're going up and down these bumps. Oh, it absolutely does. All right, this is very cool. So this is not an end, pro uh, end user product. This is a B2B product that you work with. The uh, your, your main focus is going to be uh, car screens. So we're, we're starting with automotive. Uh, it's actually one of our major focuses right now. But certainly with MIMO monitors, we have a digital sign uh, solution. This 10-inch screen can be used for retail, restaurants, museums. And so we're actively promoting that as well. But the, the main focus that we have of a company is automotive. It's a major opportunity where we can really solve a problem, number one, being distracted drivers. And number two, these screens are getting larger and curved. Our technology works right along with those shapes. Yeah. That, that's the saving lives category. That's that's big stuff. That's, that's big stuff. That's the big stuff. This is very cool. So if someone wanted to see this, they won't get to touch it if they look at it on the web. But where would they go to see your technology? Well, there's actually a couple places. Uh, we've we've been in some museums uh, in the past, but uh, so right now, or actually currently, as we speak today, at the California Academy of Sciences, we actually have two displays that are being shown there. Uh, but uh, I would expect a little bit later this year, you're going to start to see some different applications. Um, but but of course, ultimately, we want to see this in a in a car very, very soon. There you go. But is there a website they can go to to see your stuff? Of course, www.tanvas.co. We are selling a dev kit, so if you want to go ahead and buy it and try it for yourself, uh, you can do that. And so we have an SDK that allows you to create your own textures and all sorts of fun things. That's crazy. So with the SDK, though, you need you need a device as well. Well, that's what comes along. So for for the for but when you purchase it, you actually get this device right here, this MIMA monitor product, along with their SDK and API. And you're off the races. Oh, man, that's fun. That's yeah. very cool. So it's T-A-N-V-A-S dot C-O. Thank you very much, Greg. This is fantastic. Absolute pleasure.